Hi guys, my name is Jaylynn and today we are going to be talking about Cress by Marissa Myers. Cress is the fourth, fourth, no, <laughs> Cress is the third book in the Lunar Chronicles and the fourth book comes out next year so that's exciting. I have a review for Cinder and Scarlet which I will link down below. So we are going to be talking about Cress and so if you have not read the first two books this one is about Rapunzel and her story and that's kind of all I can tell you because you have to read the other two books. So if you haven't read Cinder and Scarlet, go read those two, watch my reviews, and then you can come watch this one. Yeah? 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 Okay. So bye for now. See you later guys. Okay. So for you people who have read it, oh such a good book. I love that book. It was so long too. It was like 500 something pages. I want to say 58. 558. I don't know if that's right. We'll see if it is. First, I want to talk about just Cress in general. Like when you first meet her, she's kind of like, I don't know, she reminds me of Tangled. Like almost exactly like kind of clumsy, like just doesn't really know what to do with herself. I knew that it was going to be um, Thorn and her because he's like the fugitive and she, that's how it is entangled and I was like yes I was so excited because I really do like Thorne I really do he's so nice but then like he says some of the funniest stuff but I really do like him so I was really glad that they were together and I thought they were super cute together and I love when they pretend that they're married <laughs> Oh, that was good because they weren't. It's kind of hard to pretend if you're married to someone if you're not even dating because that's kind of like awkward, like weird. That's really weird. Shells. I was really confused on Shells for a really time. So like for a really time, for a really long time. I was confused about Shells for a really long time. Um, So like they can't be affected by the queen but they don't have any powers. And so I was... I've been wondering about them for the past two books. You don't really find out anything about them besides I just said, but yeah. But I was so glad that we got to find out more about this book because I think finding about Lunars and Luna in general is just so interesting and I really like it. So you find out that shells have been, they are being used as like research for the plague because their blood is like the cure or something but um so Luna has been like manufacturing the cure for themselves for a really really long time and then they brought it to earth on purpose so I was really surprised to find that out I was really excited about it too because I thought that was so cool that well not cool for them but I thought it was like a cool idea it's not really cool for um earth but like it was like a cool idea like have they all, everyone was under the impression that Lunars couldn't get um, the plague, and they can. And so I really liked finding that out, and I really, really loved um, the story behind it and stuff like that. Cress is like caretaker, what does she call it? I don't know. But Sybil, I call her Sybil, but it's S-Y-B-I-L, so it's like Sybil. I don't know. I, I'm really bad with names. Figure out that like she is her mistress and she comes and visits her and then the Cress is the hacker and she disguises all of the lunar ships all around Earth. So uh, like Cress is like really important to the queen because the queen is able to keep her ships um, hovering around Earth for attack without them knowing because of Cress because she scrambles the satellites that's the word okay so when they meet up on her little is it satellite I, I read this a little bit ago I'm sorry um so when they meet her on her satellite and um Thorin goes in to get her and her mistress comes I was like are you freaking kidding me no like why can't it just be easy nothing can ever be easy because like that would defeat the purpose of the book. But she was, Cress was just freaking out when Sybil came. She was so scared. She's like, it's, 
it, it, it's a game it's a game that I'm playing and I was like that that actually is kind of convincing like it's not that bad but still it I felt really bad for her and then Scarlet getting taken and Wolf getting hurt really really bad I felt bad for Cinder because she can't do everything it's kind of I feel like they kind of expect her to just be able to bust out in all these lunar powers and just be amazing but she's not because she needs to work on them and she hasn't even grown up with this kind of stuff like she can't she doesn't know how she can't do everything she doesn't even want to be the princess she doesn't want all this stress and stuff wolf freaks out like wolf is just beside himself and he keeps attacking people which is bad really bad when Sybil like sent their satellite to the ground I was so scared for them I knew they weren't gonna die but I didn't know how they were going to like put the parachute up because they're like falling out of the sky I was really scared for them cuz like I know she's a hacker but it's also hard to hack under pressure I've read plenty of books to know that and I was really scared for them but they made it and then with Thorn going blind, I was like, are you kidding me? You had to hit your head that hard? That just made things so much harder. Okay, so then Thorn and Kress have to, like, walk through the whole desert. And it is so hot. And they are, like, going to die because they don't have enough water. And I was freaking out for them because, one, Kress doesn't even have shoes. Why, why would she not have shoes? I get it. It's like... It's kind of like tangled again with like not having shoes like she didn't need her she didn't go outside but why didn't she have shoes so she has to use like the towel i think that's great thorn's thinking sometimes he's thinking i really really like the couples thorn and Cress, wolf and scarlet and kai and cinder i really want them all to be together i don't have six fingers i really want them all to be together get to like experience each couple in the book as much like more than you do the other ones, but Kai and Cinder are still not together. It's kind of annoying. Cinder and who else is with them? Wolf and that guard guy go to Africa to meet with um, Doctor Erland, and Wolf's still so injured that he can't even move. He's like knocked out in the back, and I was like, "Great, you don't even have a fighter." I mean, that guard's flying the plane, and you can whatever Zinder can do, glamour things, and you don't have a fighter. So if you get attacked, you could die. A lot. I was like half yawning there. So they go to Africa and they get attacked at the end, right as Cress and um, Thorn come. And I was so scared because there were so many people there. Like there were so many um, guards there and like the thumb, thumb, ridge, thumb ridge, I don't know how you say it. When like the people of Africa, like all the lunars um, came and helped her take over all of them, I was like, yes, yes, finally, someone helped them, finally. Like no one's helped them this whole time if you think about it, like no one. Usually someone helps them. They had that queen's guard and his name was... Jackin, that's, I call him, it's J-A-C-I-N, but his real name's Jericho. But I don't, I don't really like him at all. I really, really don't like him, actually. When they all reunite in Africa, I was really happy because I don't like it when my characters are separated. It's not good. I get really mad, and I don't like that, so really glad that they got together pretty fast like it wasn't towards like right at the end of the book when they got together okay so with Scarlet being gone I didn't know if we were gonna see her point of view at all and I'm so glad that we did so you see that like Scarlet gets taken to Lunar Luna not Lunar Luna Scarlet gets taken to Luna and she is with Sybil I think that's her name yeah and she meets the queen, and then they cut off her pinky, like this part, I think. Oh, crap. Like this part. Gone, which I kind of find really gross. I don't like it when things get chopped off. Ew. 
So I find that really gross. But then you meet Winter, which is who the next book is about because it's called Winter. Oh my gosh. Shocking, right? Um, Winter is the princess and I can see it and she is Snow White. That's who her character is because she is the stepdaughter of the queen and Winter is like white as snow. Work this out in my head. So I'm very excited to see from her point of view next book and how she will benefit the crew. That's what I call them. After they leave Africa, their plan is to go and steal Kai because he is engaged to um, Queen Lavanna. And I love their plan. I'm 100% for it. Go get him away from her, please. We do not need him marrying her. When Cinder meets with, with Kai again, I was so happy. And he has his um, advisor in there. His name's like Torin, I think. And she um, knocks, <laughs> knocks him out because he won't come with her. And then she cuts out his ID chip. And Torin's like, he has, he has another tracking device on him behind his ear. It's just like, oh, thanks. Like, Torin's kind of like the father figure in Kai's life now that his parents are gone. And so... I think he knows that marrying Queen Lavanna would be really bad for him and that it would ruin him and that she's going to kill him. And so he's trying to do anything in his power to keep him alive and keep the Emperor alive just in itself. When they get to the rooftop and they all kind of meet, they so they meet up and then they go onto the roof and Sybil is there with all of her wolfy hybrid soldiers. Well, does she have any hybrids? I can't remember. But she has her soldiers and her, and then I think she has hybrids too. And Wolf almost um, kills Cinder, which I was like, don't you dare do it, Wolf. You cannot kill the princess. I love when she takes over Sybil's mind. I love it. Not because it's like amazing that she's killed someone practically, but like I love how her power is showing through and how powerful she's becoming because that is proving to everyone else that she could beat the queen. I love on the ship when after Kai wakes up how he goes and meets um, Cinder and Iko's like, he can't see me like this. <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Oh, I love Iko. She's so funny. And I just, I loved how they were together again. Oh, forever. Kai and Cinder. Really, really like them together, and I'm so glad that they got to be back together because I was feeling deprived. Then, with the revolution in mind, how sh they just started war, and how she is planning on going to Luna to take over Luna. And I'm super excited for Winter. I think it'll be the final book, but it might not be. I don't know. But I'm so excited for Winter to come out, and I love this book. I thought it was such a good um, third book to the series and I loved all the point of views that you got to see from. I loved how the story ended because it wasn't too much of a cliffy but then it kind of was like you're gonna read the fourth one but you're not still like dying over the third one. Oh oh um Dr. Erlen being her dad. I was I don't know I kind of saw it coming but then I kind of didn't like I barely like I didn't I had a feeling we were going to meet her parents because she had so much resentment toward them. But I was really glad that we got to meet him and you already kind of liked him. And you could tell that he really cared about her and that he really didn't want her taken from him. And so I felt so bad when he died. Oh, oh, and then Thorne's getting his sight back. I keep forgetting things. I'm really happy how it ended up. And I just love this book and I would recommend anyone to read it. So, um, that is my discussion on Chris. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye!